Hi, how are you today? I'm Linda Hafner. I'm a top producing realtor at ERA Key Realty, Central Massachusetts. Today's topic is how to survive buying and selling a home at the same time. Thank you for joining me. My goal is to empower you when you're buying and selling a home. I've done multiple other videos about understanding the home buying process. And now we're gonna get into a little bit more detail on how to survive when you're buying a house and selling a house at the same time and you would like to coordinate it to happen at the same time because of financial reasons. Most buyers that I work with usually need the money from selling their home to go towards the deposit for the, their next purchase. If you are one of the few who have the ability to purchase your home without selling it, it will make it a lot less complicated. But I'm taking the premise that most people are in this situation where selling their home is going to be a contingency for buying their next and that money is needed. So this is why we're gonna talk about, it's all about timing. How do you determine the best timing? How do you know where to start? Do you start to buy a house? Do you wanna sell a house first? That is going to depend on what type of market you're in. And this is where it's very, very valuable to have an experienced realtor guiding you as to one, where the market is. If, if it's a buyer's market, you're gonna approach it differently than if it's a seller's market. And number two, an experienced realtor who has been through this process before is going to be able to anticipate problems before they arise. And that's gonna eliminate the possibility of delays. Delays cost you money. You don't want delays. That is why it is so important to find a way to survive this buying and selling. It's to eliminate extra costs that are gonna stress you out. Not only do delays cost money as far as rescheduling movers and you know them requiring more money to hold the trucks depending on the closing day, but also sometimes one of the other parties that's involved in the transaction, maybe the person you're um, buying the house from or the buyer who's buying your house, maybe they can't delay it. Maybe it's gonna cost them money and complications and it just gets very stressful and complicated. So this is why it's so important to have an experienced realtor who knows what they're doing and knows how to guide you step by step to how to make this a smooth transaction. If you try to Doing it on your own it's just it's a little bit too much I think if, especially if you've never done and coordinated both of them at the same time together so first I just want to talk a little bit about how the sellers market is going to affect your timing now we've been in a sellers market for a considerable amount of time and what that means is that there are fewer homes on the market than there are buyers so with there being multiple more buyers than sellers when a new house comes on the market it sells really quickly so if it's a seller's market and you're selling your home you kind of have that understanding that okay you'll probably sell your home a little quicker than you will be able to find the best home for you that's the struggle that i've been having with my clients probably the past at least four years, I would say, you know, it's so much easier to find a buyer for their house than it is to find a house that they actually love. So with that said, we come up with a strategy of how we are going to approach the selling and buying process based on knowing this information. The strategy that I usually use in a seller's market is depending on how particular a particular client is, I like to have them begin house hunting at the same time that they're getting their home ready for sale. In other words, you don't wanna to start too early house hunting because if your house isn't ready to go on the market and you end up finding that home you love, it's not going to work well because the person you're buying the home from, they want 
a commitment that you have your house sold. So if you aren't even ready to be on the market yet, that's not going to work. And you may not even get your offer accepted, especially if they have plenty of other buyers who are willing to purchase without any contingencies. So it makes it a little harder when you have a home to sell to get your next home if it's not under agreement yet. Um, it, although in this extreme seller's market we're in, it does, it does help uh, knowing that it will probably sell quickly if priced right. But these are all some of the factors that I need to take into consideration when I'm you know, discussing a plan of action. And it really depends on your needs and your timing and coordinating all of that to make it work. In a buyer's market, it might be a better idea to get your home under agreement and since that's going to take a little longer and might be a little harder than it is to find the home that you want. So the timing of things would change, again, depending on the current market we're in. In both situations, the important thing to know is that your experienced realtor should know the specific language to add to both the contract and per contract to purchase and the purchase and sale agreement to allow for contingencies so that you're not stuck selling your home without a home to go to. Okay, the language you use in these documents is very important to ensure that you're not left homeless, which it, it doesn't happen, um, but it could happen if the language wasn't in the contract in the correct way. Regardless of whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, you are going to need to prepare your home to be put on the market. And there are things your realtor should go over with you after looking at your house and evaluating any necessary repairs, any necessary improvements. But in, in general, you really just need to remove as much personal stuff as possible and you wanna show your next buyer that you have a lot of space in your house no matter what size your house is. They wanna see space, they wanna see that they could potentially make this their home. And you do that by decluttering and cleaning your, start packing early, start getting ready for your next journey, put everything in boxes and, you know, store it somewhere, put it in the attic, somewhere out of the way, so that your house really shines through. I'm gonna do an, a video in the future. I'm gonna go into a lot more detail on how to prepare your home for market. And, and to do it in a way that you're not spending unnecessary money and you're really getting the biggest bang for your buck. So that will be a, a video in the future, so please subscribe if you wanna see that one. I usually work really hard to coordinate both sales to kind of coincide with the home inspections, purchase and sale agreement, and of course the closing day. Except that your sale, if it's needed to purchase your home, would need to close early as possible in the morning before your the home you're buying. So that that way you get the funds from your home and you can then take that money and use that deposit money for your purchase. Um, usually you can coordinate with your lawyer to set up and, and let them know that you're doing two in one day and find a way to get that done, you know, within one day. One recommendation that I am going to stress is try to not have a huge expectation that you absolutely have to not pay extra to your mover in case your day changes. Movers, you know, usually want to schedule you for that day, but they will allow you to switch days. Of course, it's going to cost a little bit more money. Try to take that with a grain of salt because it may happen and it'll take a lot of stress off of you if you have a little flexibility and if something does go wrong with either one of these transactions and you do end up not closing on the day you intended and you have to pay a little extra money that you're, you're okay with it. You know, because it, it may happen, hopefully not. I would say it happens maybe 30% of the time, but it can happen. And just de-stress that for yourself and just build that expectation into the whole process. Basically, that's it. It just takes a lot of planning and guidance from someone who's been through this multiple times and you can do it. It's, 
it's it ends up being a, a, a wonderful journey uh, as long as you have a good attitude and someone who's enthusiastically guiding you through that process and letting you know that everything is going to be okay and you move into your new house that is better to fitting the needs that you have today. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope that this information empowers you when you're buying and selling your home so that you feel confident with your decisions. I hope you will join me for my next video where I'm gonna go step by step through the process of selling your home. I'm gonna break it down, make it a little simpler for you. So check it out next time, hope to see you. Have a great day.